like to welcome you out to the class today on searching, including non-index records. Now, searching information on your ancestors is something you will be doing for as long as you are involved in <clears throat> family search and finding out information to extend your line. This class is constructed to assist you in finding the information that you need. Today we are going to review the various ways to find information on your ancestors that you're looking for on family search, including unindexed records. We will also look at some other websites that you can search and what you will find at the Family History Library that can help you out. I will be going over these one by one and invite you to follow along as I show you the process on the screen. So let's get started. The very first place I'd like to have you go is to Family Search itself, and we're going to start with that. So here I am starting at the <clears throat> my desktop. I'm going to go to Chrome, bring it up, Family History. I'm going to sign in. Okay, then what I like to do once you signed in is go up to your family tree, click on tree, bring up the landscape view, and then I need to have you, and here I am, my wife, and I can move this around. I'd like to have you find on your tree an individual that has a blue box by their name. And let me look for one here on my wife's line. Da, da, de -do, de -do, de -do. I think there is one in here. And you might have to look a while. Here you can see, here's a lot of individuals with the blue box. Thomas Butterworth, and these three, and you'll find others on here. And what this is, family search, while you are sleeping and not doing anything with the program, looks through records that they have and other people have, and if they find a record that has the name of your ancestors, they will notify you about it by putting a blue box there. So if I go to Thomas Butterworth, click on his name, and when this menu comes up, I'll go down to the bottom and click on his person page. And here's Thomas Butterworth. And if you look on the right-hand side of his person page, these are research helps or other problems that might be with Thomas. I'm going to skip the problems and the duplicates right now and look at they found two different records that has his name on it. So if I want to see what those records look like, I will click on that and it will bring up the record. And here it is. Here's Thomas Butterworth mentioned the record of George, which is his son. And you can see this was from England Manchester Parish Records. And it looks like the right thing. So I will go down and say, I want to attach this record to Thomas as a source. When you click attach on the left hand side, it tells you what is on the record and what you have on your tree. If you look up here, it has record, and here it has what is on your tree. On the left-hand side, I look at it and say, they don't have a whole bunch on the record. I've got all of that, but I want to attach this record to Thomas. So if I click on that, it will attach it. Okay, the next thing you can see is, there's. let's do a comparison on his wife. I put that on. Same thing, I have uh, information on the wife and more so than they do, but I still want to attach it. And you can see what else they found is they found a son of this person. And so at this point in time, without having to type anything in, all I have to do is click on add. It will bring, it says, look at, we found a, a George uh, this individual, which looks like the right person, and I'm going to select it and say, yes, it is. All of that information is added to my tree without me having to type anything at all. I'm going to attach this record to him. And this is where you find more information on ancestors.
Okay, they the church, uh, I mean, Family Search has just added this cute thing at the bottom. If you click on that, it'll return you to the uh, person page. So I'm back to Thomas Butterworth. So let's say this is the ancestor that you're looking for to <clears throat> gather more information about. And we just found a, a son, which we added to it. The very first thing you would do is look and see if there's any research helps. Now, there's a couple more, and I can go through those. But let me show you the next thing. After you've gone through all of those, you want to stay at the right-hand side, and you can search the records on any of these sites. Let me show you. Uh, let me click on Family Search. And Family Search will go out and look at this name. And if you look down here, it search found 11,233 records with this name on it. Now, what you have to do is go look at each one of these records, and if it's the right person, then you, well, let's look down. The first one's not. The spouse is different. The second one is. I can click on this one, the second one, which has the correct spouse, and it will bring up the record and let you do a comparison. First, it will let you look at it and say, okay, here's the record we found. Here's the person, so forth. Do you want to attach this record? So I want to review and attach the record. Brings it up very similar to what it was before. On the record, it has Thomas. On my tree, I have a little more information, but I want to attach that. So I attach it to him. Then I look at his wife, do the same thing. <clears throat> it has more information. That's a marriage date, and I don't have one, so I can click on Add. It will bring that over without me having to type anything and attach it. So I have just attached both records to those individuals, and they will show up as sources. So if you scroll down towards the bottom, you can return the family tree to the detail page of Thomas. Let me do that. OK, so what we have done is we have gone in and first looked at the blue boxes. Then we looked at family search. And we found a record, and you might be able to find many more. So let's say you don't find any. Then go to ans Then you can go to Ancestry. Let me show you. And it will look at all the records that has Thomas Butterworth. And <clears throat> here you, you can look at, copy down data, and help you to find the information you need. Now, one of the things you need to be aware of is you need to have a Ancestry account because it will not give full information. You can see here. They want you to sign up for account and, of course, pay their money. But as members of the church, you can get all of these free. Now, let me close this down and go back to the page, back to Family Search. <clears throat> all of these programs are free for members of the Church of Jesus Christ. And the way you sign up for them is you scroll all the way down to the bottom. And on the very, very bottom, it says Solutions Gallery. Click on that. And these are all of the apps, uh, approved, approved apps, I guess I could say, from, that Family Search has. Uh, there's hundreds of them there. If you look at the, here, we'll say here's the new ones. Here's ones on charts, games. You need to scroll down until you see the one that says Latter-day Saint Access. Click on More, and you can sign up for these five for free. That way you can look on their sites and look for information on your ancestors that <clears throat> might not be on other sites. Now, uh, when you have time, you have to go in and... Uh, to each one of the sites, and it, you have to sign in to Family Search and a couple of other things. So do that on your own when you get a chance. Okay, let's go back to Thomas then.
<clears throat> Let me go back to this page. So what I have done so far is, first of all, I looked at the blue boxes. Then I went through all of the various websites. <clears throat> and let's say we didn't find anything. What else can I do? Well, scroll to the top of the page and go to search. Click on search and you will see a, a menu come up. We've looked at records, we've looked at images, and we looked on the family tree. The next thing you can do is look for genealogies. Click on that. And what this is, this is a different category completely than what we have done so far. If you look on the left right hand side, it will tell you what is in this one. The old pedigree research file, community trees, oral genealogies, tons of ge other genealogies. Now, <clears throat> Family Search was started in 1894, and they have been collecting these genealogies for years. Many of these are on Family Search, and when you do a search, they come up, but many are not. Let me give you an idea of what I mean. Well, I had a lady call me uh, about a year ago. She said she had a couple of boxes of genealogy information, and she was in closing to her 90s and could not do it anymore. So I went over to her house. Uh, she didn't have a computer. Everything she'd done was pencil paper. But she had boxes and boxes. So I gave me a couple of boxes. When I went home, in the boxes were pedigree charts. <clears throat> they call them landscape or pedigree. Uh, tons of information on two family lines. And I turned all that into family search. And they put it, the genealogies here in this category. So <clears throat> you then can look and search those categories. Let me put in just my wife's last name. To kind of give you an idea and we'll do a search just on her maiden name when I do a search they found 881,000 genealogies in there that had something to do with olive you can see you can be more specific I just put in the last name to give you an idea but let's say this Agnes was the correct one if I click on that it will show me what the genealogy is not very big, uh, but it does have <clears throat> Agnes and it has her husband. On the left hand side, you can see it has marriage information. It has where they got this from and where the record came from. And it was an IGI record. You can print this out and then put this information on your tree. You might be able to find information here that you've not found any other place. Okay. Now, Family Search has a couple of more categories like this that most individuals do not know about. So if you go up with your mouse and go up to the next category called Catalog, click on that. And what this is, is it's kind of a catch-all on Family Search. If people have turned in written information, microfilm, microfiche, anything that's not official in that, <clears throat> they put it in this category for you to do a search on. As an example, uh, we used to go to one of my wife's uh, family reunions, and at that family reunion, there were various individuals that had written up booklets and books sometimes on the olive line. They turned all of these in, and they are now in this category, and all this information is there. Now, what you might find, if you find a, a book or something online here, that it has a lot of information, but some of it's irrelevant. Like, I came across the plains, we had a fire, we sang this song. It tells in detail about the families. Now, what I can do is I let's put in Olive again and do a search. Oh, I want to do it by surnames. I'm sorry. Let's go back by surnames. 
and do a search on Olive. Oh, and I got to get rid of Brazil. Okay, it found 31 different documents. These could be books, these could be anything. And you can see, you can go down through here. Here's a book by Kavanaugh. If I click on that, it will tell me all about the authors, the information. You can view a digital version of this. You can print out certain pages, and or you could read it through. So this is another area that you can find information on your ancestors that most people do not understand or know. Okay, let's go back up to the top again and go to the next category, and this is books. If I click on books, what this is is Family Search has partnered with <clears throat> every digital library that they can partner with around the world. And if you scroll down, you can see here's one from Arizona, uh, Birmingham, Alabama, Houston, BYU, so forth. It goes on and on and on. And what this is, is an individual might have, and we had one down the street from us, put together a book, got a <clears throat> an official a library number, and turned it in, and the, the library that he turned it into put it on digital records. So if you went here on the search, here again, you can put in a specific name, but let me put in one, my wife's maiden name, and have them search on that. <clears throat> and you can see they have found 248,000 books or something on the olive line or something to do with olive. And what you'd have to do is scroll through here and see if you, you can see this one, there's Oliver Descendants. Any of these books pertain to you or might have information on your family, this is a place where you can look for them. Okay. So that's a digital library. Okay, let's go up and look at one more place. This is called the Wiki. And this is put together by volunteers. And it gets a little more complicated. <clears throat> and what this is, is to help you do research. Now, what I mean by this is, let's say, let me take my example. My, on my mom's side, <clears throat> her line came from Germany. And so uh, I traced back a couple of generations, but then I went to a dead end. Uh, I knew my great-grandfather was born in Posen in 1894, or something like that. And so I needed to go to the Posen records. And I don't know how to search Germany, so the first thing I did is I went in and typed Germany and told them to do a search on it. And the wiki then will help you. If you look at the very top, if you click on help using the wiki, it will walk you through how to use the wiki. Also, it will tell you information. Here's the German flag. If you scroll down, it tells you a little bit about the country, how to guides, how to find a town, civil records, all of these different informations, how to read German, online records, you can go in here if you have an ancestor in a different country or even United States and they will walk you through how to look for records in that country or even in that state. It gets a little more complicated and it's, and uh, what's the word for? Uh, just you need a lot of patience and understanding, but it walks you through it and it does a really pretty good job all the way around. Okay, so you have looked in all these records. We have looked for in Thomas. We have added records. We have done research help. We have looked for in each one of these websites. We have gone to the top and looked in all of the search categories. 
Now, another place that you can look if you can't find any information there is on your in your uh, local family history library. And let me close this down and bring this up and show you what they have there. Let me uh, start the uh, slideshow so you can see a little bit bigger. Okay, the premium family history websites at the top there, these are 14 free sites for anyone who comes into a family history library. Now, you can see from here, let me just quickly run through here. These are websites that normally cost, but you get them all for free and use them while you're in the library. The very first one has British newspapers from 1800 to 19. You could look up obituaries, other things. Alexander Street Press has information on the United States. If you want to do a story in an area or something. American Ancestors is a large back east library that specializes in American records. Ancestry is a, is a really great general place to look. Artvark Digital is Swedish records. Uh, FamNet is New Zealand records. Find My Past is a site where you can look up individuals in Britain, Wales, and Ireland. Full 3 are military records. GenNet is another real good one. That's general. Kinpoint, I don't use that much. My heritage I use a lot. It specializes in Europe and especially Germany. You can go to newspapers.com. This is a site that has the newspapers from around the world. You have to know a name and a date. Uh, and, but it searches the papers for you. I found some really good obituaries on the site. Paper Trail, <clears throat> uh, just some dot westward immigration records. And Fazilla, uh, not the greatest one way or another. Okay, <clears throat> now let's talk about unindexed records. Now, what unindexed records are, is the family search started in 1894 and they were gathering records at that time and have been since presently family search has 220 teams out in the field taking pictures of records every day now these records are in, let's say they're in Germany. They're taking pictures of parish records, or they're in Italy, or they're someplace where your ancestors might have been. Now, they take these records and put them and send them back to Family Search. Individuals volunteer to take this information then and <clears throat> transcribe it and put it on a computer which will allow you to search. Now, Family Search has a section that you can go in and look at these records that haven't been indexed yet. Okay, now instead of me going through it, I would recommend you go to YouTube to this site and there is a video called Finding Elusive Records on Family Search. And it's at this site right here. It runs about an hour and it walks you through how to <clears throat> search these unindexed records. Now, it starts out fairly easy and it gets more and more complicated. The individual running it is one of the head programmers in Family Search. He does a really good job. So instead of hearing me talk it, I'd recommend you look at this. If you have a brick wall somewhere, you can use this <clears throat> process to look at records that haven't been indexed yet. It, he does a really good job here. When I first got this, I thought, that's great. My great-great-grandfather, I knew he was born in Posen, Germany. 
I knew a little bit about him. I knew what date he was born, but I didn't know his parents. So I thought, great. And what I did is I got this video. I looked through it about 10 times because it gets a little complicated. I finally put it up on the screen. And on his second screen, I followed along and did what this individual showed me to do. So I went on my own. I went to Posen, Germany. I found that Posen had uh, 35 parishes. Almost all of the government records had been destroyed because of all the wars in Germany. <clears throat> so I have to go to the parishes. I looked at the first parish, and of course, everything's in German. And that first parish had the records a certain indexed a certain way. I looked at the second parish. It had the records a different way. Also, I couldn't read the German. So I have a brick wall, and I know it's probably in one of those 35 parishes, but I don't think I can get anybody from German that knows German that will sit down with me and go for, through all of the records on those 35 parishes. But I did some work for an individual uh, from Italy, and I was able to find records uh, on her uh, line and took her back a couple of more generations. So it depends how complicated it is, how much time and patience you have, and <clears throat> it can be done, and good luck to you. Okay, but I would highly recommend you do that. Okay, another place you can go if this isn't enough for you, is go to Roots Tech website. Now, Roots Tech is <clears throat> where all of the genealogy organizations in the world get together in Salt Lake for a week or so every year, and they have classes, they have presentations, they have experts to help you, and Roots Tech... <clears throat> archives many of these things and allows you to look at them. Let's go to the website that I have shown here. Let me close this down and I'll show you what I mean. Bring up Google. Okay, this is the website that I've shown you on the thing and if I look at it, <clears throat> this is uh, 219. They have 218 also and I think they're in the process of putting in 220. But it has the Roots Tech conference syllabi for every class. Now, if I scroll down here, each one of these is a new is a class. And let's say uh, I need some information in, uh, on uh, let's pick on a Swedish records. If I say, oh look at, I found the power of Swedish research. If I click on that, it will show me. <clears throat> what the individual who taught this class talked about, their notes, information, and other information that you can use to search Sweden, including almost at the end of almost every class, they have other websites you can go to to search for information. These, this is a really excellent uh, place for you to find uh really good information because each one of these classes is given by an expert in their field. And you can go in and you can see there's there's one on British and you can just scroll down to here. If there's something you're interested in, you can go down and look at the notes and not the websites. Okay, this gives you a rough idea of all of the different places you can go. I hope this was helpful to you, and best of luck to you as you start to go through these. Uh, if you need any assistance, individuals at your local family history uh, library should be able to assist you or review this video and some of the information. Best of luck to you.